Hello, I'm Dr. William Inman. This is a small lecture on canine wobbler's disease or wobbler's disease. I should mention to you the term wobbler's disease is one that veterinarians use when trying to describe what the animal is actually doing. And also in veterinary medicine, very commonly what we'll do is we'll take a disease process that occurs in one species and try to apply the clinical symptomology to another species. In the equine, the area at C1 and C2 sometimes becomes really messed up and we end up with the bones moving on one another producing a neurological interference in the spinal cord that causes the back end of the horse, the back end of the horse, to wobble. The horse kind of wobbles. And so it would be called, not after the veterinarian that named the disease, but rather cana equine wobbler's disease. Well, that's fine. When we see a dog that has a wobbling-like condition too in veterinary medicine, we go, oh, well, that must be canine wobbler's disease. However, in the canine, the problem area is actually completely different than what it is in the horse. It's actually at C5 and C6 almost always. What happens is there ends up being pressure at the base of the neck. It actually occurs here, heads up here, the rest of the body's down there, it's like this. It's occurring at this particular level. C5 and C6 is right here, essentially, and that is that unstable area, basically, is why it is that we end up with this type of problem. Here's what occurs. The spinal cord goes through these vertebral segments and what happens is these dogs usually young relatively young they could be under five years of age as they move their big old head around essentially they put pressure on that neck the equine has a neutral ligament that holds their head up but the dog does not and so the pressure on that neck puts pressure on that spinal cord and then what happens is the ventral lateral aspects of the spinal cord areas down here in the neck Put pressure on the rubrous spinal tracts. That's more data than you really needed to know, but the rubrous spinal tracts goes from the brain to the rear legs. Now, this is what's really important because this is one of the most commonly misdiagnosed disease conditions in veterinary medicine. It's called canine wobbler's disease because the animal wobbles, but very commonly the dog will present itself with a problem in the rear legs. And as I mentioned before, the most common diagnosis people have with a rear leg lameness problem is hip dysplasia, degenerative myelopathy, or something wrong with the knee or whatever. These animals very commonly when they have a problem in the neck will first manifest as a problem in the rear legs. Now some breeds like Dobermans and the Red, Red Do uh, the uh, Harlequin D uh, Danes and the Red Dobermans are notorious for ending up with an injury at the base of the neck and this can be a relatively young dog where they'll end up with so much swelling in their spinal cord that they'll go down on all fours. They are quadriplegics. They were okay yesterday and today they can't walk. Those dogs are in big trouble. We'll tell you and show you how it is that we can take care of those. But for all intents and purposes, that dog has got a problem. More often than not, the dog presents themselves with problems and lack of an ataxia and also inability to move correctly in the rear legs. A lot of times, the uh, big dogs will also drag their rear feet, they'll drag their toenails like this, on the ground and actually bear the toenail out to where it bleeds. And they'll come in with bleeding toenails. And so that's sometimes the way it's diagnosed. Small dogs end up with this problem very, very commonly. However, we don't see that clinical phenomenon occurring. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But what I want to do is I want to try to have you focus a little bit on the x-ray to show you where the actual problem is. So I'm going to actually zoom into this area and show it to you right now. Here in an x-ray, we will see the neck and the cervical vertebra. The head is up here, the shoulders are down here, C5, C6, C7, and here we have presence or pressure that's occurring because of the instability at C5 and C6, putting pressure on the spinal cord. As it puts pressure on the spinal cord, the ventral aspect of that spinal cord is a rubrous spinal tract which goes to the rear end of the animal. That's why we very commonly will see rear end problems before we see quadriplegic problems or problems on all four legs. So what we do with these cases is we come in with an adjusting device. Now we show you this adjusting device as a means to go ahead and reestablish normal neurological function at this particular area. We take the spasm out of the muscle that surrounds the actual spinal cord, relax them to the point where they can actually get a, uh, some pressure off and start to heal. We'll come in and contact the wings of the atlas on either side and dorsal spinous process. If this looks completely strange to you, I'd recommend that you go to the VOMTECH, V-O-M-T-E-C-H dot com website and look at the um, actual videos that we have that show you exactly how to do it. This is how we treat these dogs routinely. They will get relief, if not immediately, within the three or four hours, and then in three or four days they're doing significantly better. 
better. We'll actually go through the whole spinal cord and adjust the whole animal. We rarely ever just adjust one area. We go through and we do the whole animal. As I mentioned to you before, these animals can be in big trouble. They can be come into us after they were normal yesterday, quadriplegic. We need to get on top of that animal immediately and get that animal adjusted. Also probably laser, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And then also we want to adjust them on schedule. So we apply this. One of the things that we found out when we saw a lot of dogs, like miniature dachshunds that come in with paralyzed rear legs where they blow a disc back here, is we'll find out after we fix this, it comes back and it gets better and worse and better and worse. We'll find out that that animal always has a C5, C6 instability. And it's that area in the small dog that holds this problem in place. So we say that this particular area, which doesn't show any clinical symptomology in the small dog, but it does in the large dog, they don't get canine wobbler's disease, but they get this as a secondary subluxation, secondary to the primary condition that's occurring in their neck. Once we treat this area in the neck, in these small dogs, we're able to treat this area in the lower back. This is very, very important because you would never know there was a problem in the neck. Radiographically, it doesn't show up. Nothing shows up, essentially. It looks like the dog has got pain back here, and they do. But this is a secondary problem. This is the primary problem here. One of the other things that we'll do for these animals that come in, and they can be incredibly painful and also in big trouble, is we can rehabilitate their neurological function with what we call frequency-specific low-level laser therapy. On the vomtech.com website, we'll show you also information on how it is that we go about delivering that information. What we can do is we can take and we can put energy into the anterior aspect of the brainstem, essentially, and then reorganize that along the spinal cord using this particular technology. This actually has frequencies that are specific for the tissues, particularly 114.7 cycles per second will actually stimulate the glial-derived neurotrophic factor, which will rehabilitate neurological tissue and supportive cells in the neck. Also remove inflammation and rehabilitate neurological function, even for paralysis. And we'll talk about that in other videos too. But the condition that we use to take care of these animals that are in big trouble, animals that were okay yesterday and are paralyzed on all four legs now, we used to give up on those guys. They could sometimes respond to just this. These are the disaster cases. But now they respond to a combination of VOM plus laser, essentially. Most of the cases that we see come into our practice with ataxia or weakness in the rear legs or maybe inappropriately able to walk or move correctly in the front legs. We uh, use this technology on them essentially and get these animals taken care of. I usually get one or two calls from practitioners I've trained. Remember, I've trained over 8,300 doctors throughout the world. Uh, one or two calls a week on this condition, which is actually canine wobbler syndrome, essentially. And they're calling me up and giving me uh, signs and symptomologies of canine wobblers, and they don't even know they've got a wobbler's disease. Even if they didn't know they had a wobbler's disease, if they were to use this instrument and go through and, and adjust this animal correctly, like we described, that they would successfully be able to treat these animals. So I would, I would encourage you to go to the website, vomtech.com, and look at the technology. If you have any questions, you can contact me at 888-935-4866. I'll be happy to talk to you in depth about these cases. Our mission statement is to get as many animals treated effectively and correctly and as inexpensively as possible for the sake of the client and also for the animal. And essentially, and so that's why we do it the way we do it. In the meantime, I'll be happy to see you again in another video. We've got a bunch of these uh, techniques that we can treat effectively with the use of a spinal accelerometer that most of our medicines and surgeries can't teach. By the way, there is a surgery that is designed to take care of this and stabilize that. I've done that surgery. It's an, a fun surgery to do. It basically allows you to use virtually every piece of stainless steel in your veterinary practice. It's relatively easy to get to. However, it is known that once you do the surgery and you fuse C5 and C6 surgically, then it's only a matter of eight or nine months before the vertebral segment above it and below it actually fail. And then you're right back to where you started from. And it is, in fact, not a solution. It's just a temporary fix. I'm not criticizing that surgery. Sometimes that surgery needs to be done to get the animal walking again. But what I am telling you is that it is not a solution. This is a solution for the condition. We basically rehabilitate that C5, C6 area, and it grows back stronger than it was before, so it won't blow out in the future. And so that's, and we also make sure the vertebral segment above and below it are actually healthy too, and they won't blow out so the animal lives happily ever after and doesn't have this problem occurring in the future. Thank you for listening and have a great day.